Today I want to share with you a secret that will blow your mind. How to build your own retriever augmented generation system, aka RAG, not once but twice using two different languages, Python and JavaScript, without using language chain or Lama index and no frameworks at all. Just a pure hands-on code. And the best part, it's all 100% free with resources that you can start using right now. I will walk you through it step by step, breaking it down so it's easy to follow. And if you are in a rush, you can skip ahead using the timestamp down below. So let's get started. We're gonna look to this image to understand how the logic of our rag work. The first thing that we have is a query, aka our questions. When we send this query, it get embedding. And this embedding will gonna handle retrieving information from our vector database or basically the vector that we stored. And we're gonna get the similar vectors, aka our context. And we're gonna take this context and send it to a prompt that we have inside our rag with the question. And we're gonna send this actually to a large language model over here. And the large language model will generate the perfect answer or response for us. This is can be created at any language. Is a JavaScript, Python, or Go, or C, it doesn't matter. This image explains how our embedding work. We will have multiple objects, or might be a text or an image, and we will send it to something called the embedding model. The embedding model will turn this object, for example, to, to a vector with bunch of number. And when we search inside our embedding, the model will also take the text, and turn it to a vector and search for the most similar numbers to this name, aka banana. For example, here the banana have 2.5 minus 2, but the similar vector to it is 2.5 minus 3. So this is two vectors are similar to each other. So this is what we will get as a result. This is how embedding retrieving basically work. I'm going to start with the Bison codes and I'm going to switch to JavaScript. So if you want to just see the JavaScript code, skip ahead using the timestamp. So what I need for this Bison code, install sentence transformer, Wikipedia EBI, NumPy and Skibby and Google Generative AI. You can use any generative AI provider like OpenAI, Cloudia, Grok, Llama, it doesn't matter. I'm sticking with Google because it's free and you don't need anything. And finally, Tavily Python. I'm gonna show you also in the end how you can create a rag with web retrieving information. Imported all this library that I want. So the first part that we have inside our code is doing the embedding. As I show you in the image, this part or this line basically will be our model that will take the text and turn it to a numeric vector representation that will hold the meaning. Machine are usually are extremely dumb. They're like Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePants. He's dumb, he doesn't understand. So we turn this sentence or strings that we have to a numeric values to store it that's easy to understand for our machine. Here I'm retrieving the information for our rag from our Wikipedia page. I'm using Red Dead Redemption 2 page and uh, this is, I'm using Wikipedia because it's free to use for anyone. You don't have to even have a token to access it. And I'm using Red Dead Redemption Base because I have been playing this game a lot recently and it's a really good game. And I'm gonna store the documentation that I get from the page inside this paragraph and it will be basically multiple chunks. And here I explained what is sentence embedding and what is the Hugging Face model hub if you don't know what it is and the sentence transformer. The second step that I have is looping over the paragraph that I just created from the Wikipedia and I'm gonna basically put it in different chunks or wrap a text around it every 100 width and this wrap text is over here and this, after that we're gonna take the text, the text that we have and we're gonna turn it to embeddings like I said over here we're gonna take every paragraph and use the model to turn it to a vectors here are our paragraphs and we're going to use something called normalizing embedding equal to rule and normalizing think of it like setting the volume of a speaker to the same level for all the songs aka our text so we can fairly compare how similar the song are without being influenced by how loud they are. And I'm explaining also what does this piece of code do over here. And the step after that is 
asking a question to our embedding right now we can ask the embedding that we have anything that we want inside this page i have here a simple question how many years this game need to be developed and first thing that we need to do guess what it's embedding we're gonna take this query do embedding on it and we're gonna take the embedding that we created aka the vector and search our document embedding that we have over there and search for the most similar text vectors for these questions and we're gonna take only the first three vectors then i'm gonna take the similarity that we have and i'm gonna search for the paragraph that we created on top and get the text for it which is over here and the last step it's extremely easy we're gonna take this text and we're gonna break it apart by looping over, over it and put it inside this context and we're gonna once more pass our question over here and give the context and the query to a prompt. This prompt is extremely easy. It will guide our large language model to answer our question in a very good way. Here we tell our large language model, use the following context to answer the question at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Don't to try to make up any answer. And here our context and here our query. This is the prompt will look like if you print it. It's a very long. This is the question. This is our context. And this is the instruction. And last part is pass this giant prompt to our generative large language model. I'm using the Gemini 1.5 Pro model from Google. And here I give it the prompt and the response. This game development lasted over eight years. Wow. It's a very long time to develop a video game, but she got us one of the best video game ever. This is our first track. It's done. It's very easy. Honestly, the only logical part that you have to worry about is the embedding, how to handle the embedding correctly using the model that we have over there. An important note over here, when you have a BDFs that you want to save or a collection of strings or a collection of documentation that you will go through every single time. The embedding have to be done one time, not multiple. And to do that, you will save it inside a vector database. We saved it here because this is a very simple page. There is not a lot of documentation inside it. And it's easy to save it inside a RAM temporarily. But when you're working with a PDF, or a large collection of PDFs or a box, you need to save it in a vector database and you have to handle how to process the PDF and how to basically manage it in a correct way. And if you are interested in this kind of topic, please let me know. I can create a very detailed video how to do that also using Python or JavaScript if you want to. The other way to build a reg without using Wikimedia and embedding is basically using a web api i'm using tivoli as a researcher using the web it give you 1000 requests per month use and give you a free api keys that you can use so don't worry about paying anything to anyone so here i set up my tivoli client and i tell it search about what happened during the burning man floods which is a bit dark and here it search the entire news which what make it extremely good when you link large language model to a new information it become much much better here i give it a simple query what happened during the burning man flood with the exact query that i search for and here is the results bunch of url with the content of this news and we take this actually context web we pass it to the same prompt when we give it the same query get the response from the large language model what happened and it's a pretty detailed answer it's much shorter but it's also very powerful no need to do embedding or download any model over here and now let's switch to javascript javascript is not equipped by default to build this kind of stuff i by default i mean it doesn't have the library nimby and uh, some of the library did give me troubles to run it correctly, but thank God I managed to do it in the end. Well, I'm gonna use Express to build an ABI. We need .env and we need Xnova transformers to access the embedding model. And I'm gonna use good old Axios and of course, Google Generative AI. 
And I'm gonna call the dot env to call my ABIs. And I have here a function to print logs with the reg ABI prefix. Here I'm check on the Google ABI if it doesn't exist and it will throw any error. And I'm here creating or set up our Google ABI key here. I'm gonna store our embedding inside this embedding pipeline and once more to if you have a large collection of pdfs or box or documentation you don't store it inside a variable you store it inside a vector database like pinecone or superbase or chrome db but this topic is completely different thing and it will need an its own video so if you are interested just please let me know down below in the comments we have here multiple functions the first one is coin similarity this will handle calculating how similar two pieces of text are and to return a number between minus one and one, where one means they are very similar. We are here calculating the coin similarity between two vectors. And I have left here multiple comments about the details of this code if you want to read more about it. We have here another function called get the Wikipedia text. This is the first example, the same one that we built in Python. And I'm using here Axios to fetch the Wikipedia ABI BHP. And I pass the parameters that I need, like the query, the topic that I want, what type of tickets that I want. And this stuff is basically the typical stuff that you do when you're talking to an ABI. And I fetch the response and get the page ID. And if it didn't exist, I will throw an error. And finally, if everything is correct, I will get and return the text that I got from the page of Wikipedia. Here, this function will handle the embeddings. It's important to separate every tiny piece of code in a function, especially in JavaScript, because it's easily can get wrong very quick. Here in embedding, I'm using also the pipeline from the transformer from the transformer library over. I'm using the another model called the Xenova all many lm which is recommended by the library itself and i'm here creating something called embedding pipeline the embedding pipeline will it will take the text that it got from a function that we fetch the wikipedia page with and it will basically handle the entire embedding and it will return it for us in a term of an embedding variable and finally we have a function called the generate the content this will take the prompt that we will pass to the generative AI large language model and give us the finals, final answer. In the end, we have here a very large function that will put everything together called perform a rag that will combine everything to get our final answer. At first, we'll need the topic and the query and the topic, if it's not a string, it will throw an error. And first thing that we'll do is searching the Wikipedia and it will trim and filter our own return paragraph. It doesn't have any paragraph. It will throw an error. And then it will take the paragraph that we got and do an embedding on it. Same thing that we did in Python. And we get this embedding. Okay. And we will search for the similarity on it. The similarity function that we have, aka the coin similarity function. We took the paragraph embedding and the query embedding. And the similarity that we will have also will search for the text for it and if, if everything went correct right now we will have our final top paragraph and we can basically pass this context to the prompt with the query and exactly like python we also have a prompt this use this information to answer the question be clear and to the point if you don't find enough information to answer just say so it's almost the same thing but in different format and we give it the context our top paragraph that we found when we search our embedding, we give it the questions and we expect answer at the end. We will give this prompt to our large language model function and finally it will give us an answer. The last part is not necessarily, but I needed to do it to make the test easier. I built an Express app on the board 3000 to basically talk to this rag and see if it will work or not correctly. I built the two different uh, ABI point. One is called get and which basically tell us the status of the rag ABI. And the second one is the post rag and it will return for us the final answer. And uh, I send to our rag application on the board 3000, this JSON body, a topic about Albert Einstein and ask it what was the 
best thing that Einstein contributed to the physics basically. And here I got the answer. First thing that's sent is the topic and the success status is true and the, qu the query is the question. And finally, I get this kind of context, which I got from Wikipedia. And the response from the large language model is the one here. Development of the theory of relativity and the important contribution to quantum mechanics and the timestamp that it took basically to send this response. I had to make it like this to show you that you can get all the stuff that you send and more in JavaScript. Usually it's a slightly harder to do this in language scene, but you can do it if you manage to make language scene GS work correctly in your backend. Here another example using WebRag. It's almost the same thing with the same setup, except that I'm using Tivoli API this time. And Tivoli have a new library called Tivoli Core. Tivoli Core is a brand new library. Actually, it's in beta and it was rough around the edges a little bit to use it a couple of weeks ago, but right now it's more stable to use. And it's extremely easy to handle also. It will give us access to the same thing in Python. We can call it by using the Tivoli and we'll pass the API key and we will use also embedding pipeline and we do the same, the same thing exactly except we're not fetching from Wikipedia, we're fetching from the web and we can talk to the web and do anything that we want. Here we're searching the web using the Tivoli search function. And the response that we will get, we will format it a little bit because we get a very large array. And here we have title, URL, and finally the content of the URL. And I do embedding the same thing last the, like the last example and generate content, the same thing like the last example. And finally, another function that will perform a rag instead of talking to a Wikipedia, it will talk to the web. It's exactly like the last one, replaced just one function. And finally, the same exact thing, we created an ABI using Express. One for get and one for post, the post called search, and it's run on the board 3001. And let's see it in action. Actually, it's extremely easy to talk to this one. In the board 3001, I have URL search, and I ask it, I send it a query, JSON query, what is artificial intelligent? And I get a few things in a very decent API format, if I can say so. The status, success, the query that we send, and the sources, basically the top three information that we found inside the API of Tivoli, and the response that we get eventually from our large language model. And it talk about the artificial intelligence refers to the development of computer system capable of performing tasks like typically require the human intelligent and blah, blah, blah until the end in a JSON format. And all this is needed up in one JSON format like an ABI backend will do usually. And I am done also with JavaScript. And thank God I'm done because I'm started to losing my voice. You're gonna find every single snippet of code down below in a GitHub repo both JavaScript and Python. And I left a lot of comments, as you can see here, for functions and explaining what is this. So when you read it, you will not be confused and understand every single line of code that I have created. So if you found this video respecting your time and providing you with valuable information, please hit the like and subscribe button. I am aiming to get to 4,000 subscribers before the end of this month. I hope I can do it. If you have any request, about this kind of topic, RAG application or agents, just let me know down below in the comments. I enjoy creating videos like this, even if it doesn't perform that well in my channel. So thank you for watching and see you on the next video.